couple of days ago, I received an email from a client concerned about an email that she got from a vendor for the business that she manages. And she was asking me to look into this, see if this is legit. And she told me that she had clicked on a link inside the email and she described what happened and sounded like indeed there was something wrong with it. This is a pretty important example of a scam slash hacker incident that I, I think the general public and business is not very aware of that this is what the bad guys are doing these days. Uh, the bad guys have, have learned and evolved over time to get better at their craft. We used to be told in newspaper articles and newscasters would say, don't click on an email from somebody you don't know as a way of protecting yourself. So as long as you know the person, it would be okay. Well, that's not true anymore. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've had several cases among my clients where they get an email from somebody they know that appears to be doing, making some kind of a business inquiry that is within the scope of their normal interactions with each other, but it is actually a hoax, a scam, a uh, hacking attempt. So, you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the nuts and bolts of how this one went down. Now, I want to make it very clear. I do not have permission to do this. I considered asking for permission to do this, and I decided out of an abundance of consideration for my client and for the third party company involved that it's better off for me to not ask permission. What I am going to do is I'm going to go to extreme methods to protect their identity. And the reason for choosing this path is so each of them has plausible deniability so that if anyone calls them on the carpet about it, they can say, I didn't know he was doing that. And so that they can be safe. Now, if either company requ requests me to take the video down, I will take the video down. I'm hoping that even if they see this, they will recognize the value and the importance of providing training like this to um, the world at large and uh, will allow it to stay up because I think I am going to be successful at anonymizing the content here enough that you won't be able to know it's them unless you were involved in the incident and recognize the email correspondences. So as I'm creating this video, as I'm going through it, I'm going to be pausing the video once in a while and make some adjustments to the blurs and the blackouts on the screen in order to protect them. So let the show begin. So here's the first email in the sequence. And I've blurred out some sections and, and blacked out one section. So up here we have the name of who it's coming from. And the first letter or the first name is, is an L. I've allowed you to see that much. It has the real email address for the person involved from the service vendor. This next line shows the date. That's not really a, a, a consequence. I didn't have to block that out, but it was January 28th, 2021. Today is February 2nd, 2021. And it was 8.26 a.m., so that's a normal kind of time for a business to be sending email to another business. The next line has the address of the person it's going to, and you can see the first three letters of her first name. And it's obviously her real email address because she received the email. And then the subject line. My client, I'll refer to as CH, since I've shown you that much of her first name, did not notice the error in this subject line right away, and neither did I. I took closer inspection before I realized the error. I'm kind of delaying before pointing out what the error is to give you a chance to see if you notice the error on this line, but it's nothing more severe, more significant than a typo, maybe. It says Fresno country past due invoice. Well, 
we're not in Fresno country, we're in Fresno County, but a subject line of Fresno County past due invoice that made, on, on my first glance on this, I thought it meant it came, it was coming from a Fresno government, like a, like a Fresno County service. And the email address actually kind of looked like that because their email address has a, an abbreviation for their business name or acronym of their business name, which is just a couple of letters, and then the word Fresno.com as their email address. So that kind of made it sound like it was a Fresno County institution. So when I first looked at the email, I immediately assumed and thought that this is claiming to be coming from Fresno County. So that email address of initial initial Fresno.com, I said, no, that's not the way if it was Fresno County, it'd be Fresno.gov or Fresno.co.gov, something like that, if it was an actual government entity. So I thought the email address itself was totally bogus. Turns out the email address was not bogus. It was actually a valid email address for a legitimate private company who's based in Fresno. So then it says, please see attached invoice to process our past due statement. So here they're putting a sense of urgency into this email to, to put the receiver of this email a little bit on edge. So maybe they're not going to be as careful. So there's a little bit of psychology there by calling it a past due statement. And then down here they have the name of the document and they called it an attachment. And here's the name of a document. It has a couple of words there. It's the, the full spelled out name of the company involved. And then the word remittance, dot PDF. So you put a dot PDF on something, that makes it look like an attachment. This is not an attachment to the email. This is a link within the body of the email and that link could take you to any web page, any URL code that's valid on the internet. So that's not an attachment. Now when I float the mouse over it down in the bottom left corner of the screen, I, I'm going to move the mouse away from that and back onto it. So you watch the bottom left corner of the screen. You see that flashing thing down there? When you float the mouse over a link, bottom left corner should show you what that link goes to. And that address down there says HTTPS. The S means it's a secure uh, website, a secure web page. So that gives it a little bit of authority that it's safe. It's not. <laughs> then www.evernote.com. Well, Evernote is a web service that legitimate companies use for communication, so that's okay. And then forward slash shared, forward slash s618, forward slash client, SMV note, GUI ID, a big long number code, note key, a whole bunch of numbers and symbols, another HTTPS, another Evernote. It just goes on and on and on. And it is not proof positive that this is a problem, but it does show us that that's a link and it is not an attachment. Now, the next paragraph, if you are not the right person to receive this invoices, please space space have your AP slash accounting in all caps, space space, department to follow up, comma, review and let me know if you need anything else from us to process payment. So there's some grammatical spelling problems in there, which is very commonplace with hacker slash scammers that are not English as a first language. So that is an extra reason to 
be on alert, yellow alert. This doesn't seem right. It doesn't sound right. Now, people can type emails and make typos. It happens. But the scams these days typically do have spelling, grammatical errors, sentence structure errors, non-English as a first language authors. Um, but they will get better. The scammers are working at educating themselves to become better. So that as a clue is not going to last very long. This blacked out portion here has the logo of the service provider involved. So I've blacked it out to try to keep anonymity. And then it has a signature line. It has this, the name of the person and their title at the uh, company name. So that is a pretty convincing email. Now my client clicked on that link and went to that page. And I'm going to do that a little bit to show you where it goes to. But before doing that, I'm going to show you the rest of the email chain. To do that, I'm going to scroll up this screen. And in order to do that, I'm going to do another fix of the blurring images. This is my client's response to that first email on Thursday, January 28th. This is my client's name here and her email address. Wrote, I am unable to open your attachment. I tried looking up the invoice number on the name of your attachment and I don't see that I have this invoice. Is the invoice Oops, I didn't block that out well enough. All right, so I'm going to edit out this portion up to or right after I move to this scene. Pausing. And contains the reply that my client sent to this person and it shows original message. Well, what if I scroll up higher, you would see the message that this piece was uh, um, what replied to. This is a chain of emails that are all together in one email right now. And I'm just scrolling up through them and moving my blur settings. So she says, I'm unable to open your attachment. I tried looking up the invoice number on the name of your attachment and I don't see that I have this invoice. Is this invoice for, and then she names three different businesses that she actually manages or is involved with managing. So she at this point doesn't know which of the three businesses their invoice is for. Can you provide an invoice PDF that we can open with Adobe? So, judging by the wording in this email, my client still thought that was an attachment. She didn't realize that that was actually a link that went to a web page. And I'm going to show you what that goes to because that's really part of the, the clever deceitfulness of this hacker slash scammer. So, in order to clarify that, figure out what's going on here. She's asking which company, and she's ask, asking for an actual invoice PDF that she can open with Adobe, because that's what she's accustomed to doing. That's the way PDFs are handled. So the fact that that link in that email took her somewhere else, she didn't know what to do with it, and she could have done the wrong thing, and you'll see that in a little bit. So this was my client's first response after she had clicked on that link in the email. So I'm going to switch back and um, pause the video again so that I can do another blurring operation.
And here's the response from the hacker. Up here in the uh, from section, it has that person's name, and I've blurted out, but it has a different email address. And actually, I was intending to try to show you the email address. It's got the, the person's name on the, on the left side of the at symbol. The right side of the at symbol is a different domain name entirely. So what happened is when the hacker got a response from my client, that's when I suspect a live person at the keyboard actually went to work and they actually created a new email account at protonmail.com. Okay, so it's got the person's name, the vendor's name at protonmail.com. I don't mind telling you that because protonmail.com does not belong to either my client or the vendor. That belongs to the scammer. So now the scammer is sending an email from their actual email account. Now, my client, somewhere along here, had told me that she, oh yeah, when she sent an email to me, she said that she had sent a request to, in the form of a reply, but also copied it to other email addresses within that vendor's company. Uh, and we'll get to that in a little bit. So, the point now is that this email came back with this uh, new email address. And the explanation, they say, it's a past due invoice. Now there's two apostrophes, I-T apostrophe apostrophe left, S. That might actually be a quote symbol rather than two apostrophes. Again, non-English speaker, or English as a second language person. It's a past due invoice document for your organization, comma, I want you to review and get back to me kindly, with a capital K, no period, kindly download attached file, there was no attached file, to access invoice document safe and secured. So the wording there, grammar, kind of weird, not quite right. Um, trying to get my client to actually follow through with that link that was in the original email. And I have yet to show you what that link does. We will get to that. So the rest down here you've already seen and I blurred out my client's name in a couple of places here. Okay, so now you see the scroll bar over here. I'm about to scroll up further to see what occurred after this. Eventually we're gonna to get to the top. All of this that we've been looking at is all now contained within the body of the email that we'll get to when we get to the top. So I'm gonna pause this again and prepare the next section. You know what, I think this works good for me to change camera views during these pauses. Here we go. So here's the next piece. This email is from my client responding to what turns out to be the hacker, but she has noticed the change of email address. So on the to line, she is, when she clicked reply, it fills in that new hackers, that new email address for the hacker. And then she has added the original person's email address, which is actually a little bit different than what she was first seeing, I think. I'm gonna check on that. I'm gonna pause for a moment. No, I was wrong about that. It is using the original email address for the service provider that the hacker apparently has uh, commandeered, uh, plus the new email address for, that the hacker has created, 
plus she did a CC to another person within that vendor's organization that she probably has more recently had communications with and knows it is valid. She's starting to suspect that something's not right here because of that change of email address. So she says, again, I understand it is a past due invoice, but I am unable to open it the way that it is being sent to us. Also, I work for more than one organization. That's why I asked if, oh, there I went and messed up again. All right, so let's see. I'm going to want to restart at the point where I switch to this email. That way I also cut out that bogus business about the um, uh, different email address. So I'm going to pause this. So here's the next section where my client replied. So up here in this part from the from section has my client's name and email address and the date and time. And then she went, when she clicked reply, she noticed the change of email address for this other party. So she added on the end of the two line the original email address for the person at the service provider's company. Plus, she added a CC line to somebody else within that company. I'm assuming it's somebody that she's had more recent interaction with. Because it is apparent here that she's starting to suspect something's not right here. And what she says, again, I understand it is a past due invoice but I am unable to open it the way it is being sent to us. Also, I work for more than one organization. That is why I asked if it is for, and then she names the three different organizations that she does administrative work for. The next paragraph, I will not be able to review it and get back to you on payment status until you can send it in a way that it can be opened. I don't know why I can't open it. So she hasn't made any accusations yet. She's not convinced or sure that this is some kind of a, a scam or, or bad actor. But I think because she did that carbon copy, she's suspecting at this point. All right, so now I'm going to scroll up and we're going to look at the next thing that happened. So let's click over to this next section. And this email comes back from the original email address in the service provider's office with the name and the email address matching the first email that came through. And it still has a carbon copy to the third party within that service provider's office. And the email is being sent to my client and they say hi and there's the beginning of her name this is spam please delete and disregard if you clicked on it i would let your it department know sorry for any confusion regards they have their logo and they have the uh, person's uh, signature that originally started all of this email so i was not convinced uh until looking at this portion of the email correspondence that this person was actually still employed by the company. And, and yes, uh, he or she, I suppose, that's a neutral, gender neutral name, um, is obviously still with the company. So then I've got other stuff blurred down at the bottom. And then this section down here is actually the uh, addressing part of that email that we looked at in the last sequence. So then there's more scrolling up to do. So we're going to go back to pause and I'm going to fix that up to get it ready. And here I've got a pause button. And actually, before I hit the pause button, I'll just go ahead and click on this and give you an idea of what I'm doing. So I click on this button down here and that's going to bring 
that scene over onto this panel. Did I actually click on it? Come on, try it again. There it is. So now I'm going to do my adjustments here. Once I got my adjustments done, I click on that push live and then it, then you'll be able to see what's on that screen. So here we go, pausing. Okay, so here's the top level email with blurring where it needed, needed, of course. As, so this is an email from my client to me. So it's, hi, Doug. Now, it's from my client, plus she has included a few other people in her office in this email. And they're named in this email. So she says, hi, Doug. So something strange happened today. I received an email from someone. Okay, there's a little spelling issue there. I received an email. Well, this, everybody can, anybody can make a mistake. I received an email from someone I've gotten emails from before asking me to look into a past due invoice. It came up as an invoice to be opened using an internet browser. So she's referring there to that link in that email. And I'm going to show you what that does in a little bit here. I did click on it and was unable to open it. I emailed them back and told them I couldn't open it, resend it in a format I could open, and asked them to clarify what building it was for. Remember, she has an administrative function over three different companies, and they're actually referred to as buildings. They emailed back, still being vague. I replied again and noticed their email was slightly different this time. I then CC'd the original person and another person from their company whose emails I had used in the past. This time, and she's using the name here of the first person, this time person A wrote back stating it was a spam and to let our IT part department no. So you saw that email. Then she goes on, also one of her co-workers who no longer works for the company, his old email received one and she gives another name here. This was the first per this person's replacement forwarded, forwarded it to, and there's another name within my client's company. She also tried opening it. I also saw that here's another person's name within the company who's actually no longer employed there, but still has an email account that's monitored. So this other person's email received one of these messages and it appears to open also. Okay, so I think that means the email was open because you know how in an email client it looks bolded when you haven't opened it and it's not bolded if somebody has opened the email. It is possible, and then here's another name, <laughs> tried, oh, tried opening it at, and then this is one of the other building names. Those, so there are multiple people involved in my client's office. Then the last paragraph, so here I am letting you know, letting your know. Okay, another spelling. Hope all is okay. And of course, spelling errors happen. I do it all the time too. Spell check doesn't, <laughs> doesn't catch those errors, does it? All right, so that is the entire chain of the email. Now I'll point out up here, you see the word viruses. That's just because I have this email from my client stored in a folder that I call viruses. And that's a place that it's just a convenient place for me to collect the evidence of wrongdoings on the internet. So now I'm gonna pause again and I'm go down to where that link is and show you what happens when 
we click on that link. So let's go hit that pause button again. There we go. Recording again. So here's that original email. And here's that link for remittance dot PDF. So let's see, when I click on this, I think there might be a piece of information exposed. So I'm going to blur the entire screen and click on that. And here's the click. Oh boy, I'm going to have to do a more severe blurring of that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to blur this and black out this and then I'll clip out from when I say that I'm pressing the button to this point. Okay, yeah, so pausing now. So here is what that link takes us to. I actually had to pause because I need to change some blockings a little bit. So. I did a black a blackout for their logo of the vendors company and for the name of the company because it's real big and bold. Now this web page was not genuine to the service provider. There's also the company name up here in this blurred section up here. So that has the company's name. This square over here has the company's logo and then this right here is a an even larger version of the company's name. The crazy thing is the company name, the vendor's company name up here is misspelled. <laughs> Down here, I've blurred out the email address of the person within the service provider company that allegedly sent the first email. And it says this person that has shared, has shared you a secured invoice document. There's two spaces between invoice and document. So it's got the person's email address has shared you a secured invoice document. So that's also, again, non-native English speaker. Uh, data received January 28th, 2021. Document size, document type, PDF online file and then a link for preview attachment. Then down here it says file will work with your correct email credentials only. So they're wanting the recipient of this file to enter their correct email credentials only. And then it's got this icon for Microsoft 365 showing. So this hacker slash scammer has done their homework enough to know that my client is indeed a Microsoft 365 user. It's not obvious by looking at their email address, but if you know how to do the research, it's not hard to find out that that email address is hosted by Microsoft 365. So what they're trying to get here is for my client to enter their correct email credentials. What does the hacker or scammer want to do with that? Once they get my client's credentials, they can then go into my client's OneDrive account and their online Microsoft Word, their online Outlook, they can access all of my client's emails, all of my client's contacts, all of my clients' documents that are stored within their OneDrive folder, which that is primarily where this person's documents are. They do not have an on-site server. This is the administrator of three businesses. And they're, well, they're, okay, there's some nuance there, but I'm not going to go into that. Uh, there's documents in her OneDrive folder associated with three companies. That would be a very serious breach. 
coming from a slightly above beginning level hacker. Um, and even calling this a hacker is a little bit, a little bit ambiguous because hackers most traditionally would be somebody trying to break into a network through the uh, through a server or through a router, something like this. This is a little bit of social engineering going on here. Now, let's also point out that this, uh, this is an Evernote document, a legitimate Evernote document. And over here, there's a button to save copy to Evernote. My client does not use Evernote. That's kind of irrelevant to this, but using the word Evernote, and using the word Microsoft adds a little bit of uh, legitimacy to this page. Now up here in the address bar, the URL shows Evernote.com and all of this URL up here, that looks legitimate. And indeed it is legitimate. They created an account on Evernote and they can use it just like any legitimate company. They've got down here terms of service, privacy policy, and report spam. Well, that's all Evernote uh, links. So when I float the mouse over this preview attachment, down in the bottom left corner, we get a URL that has an additional clue. Uh, so I'm going to move the mouse away from that and back onto it. And down the bottom left corner, you'll see this blinking URL there. Okay, it's blinking just because I'm moving the mouse. So when I leave the mouse on it, it stays up solid. So that at, that URL says https colon slash slash cnarauad and yada da da. But then dot azurewebsites.net. Azure is Microsoft's cloud uh, services. So this lands another level of um, legitimacy to this because what we're about to click on is something that's hosted on Microsoft Azure websites. However, anybody can create a website on a Microsoft Azure system. So this probably is meaning that the bad guys are actually using a virtual PC that is on that that is hosted by, provided by, or rented from Microsoft Azure. Now you can get trial accounts on Microsoft Azure and set up a website or web pages without ever revealing who you truly are. And that's probably what's going on here. But the real objective of the bad guys here appears to be they're trying to get the real valid credentials of my client's Microsoft 365 account, which just op busts open the doors for the bad guys in what they can find. For instance, they could go scouring through my client's folders and perhaps find a file called passwords. I don't think there's such a file there, but there could be. There could be banking information. There could be tax information. There could be an accounting file that they could copy out um, and then gain access to financial accounts, payroll information, social security numbers, uh, uh, the customer data for my client, my client's customers. There's just an awful lot of damage a hacker could cause if my client fell for this. And she came close. She did click on this preview attachment. I know that because she described to me what I'm about to show you. So here I'm going to pause again and set up this next screen.
Okay, so I don't need any blurring for this. The page that this went to has a logo up here for Microsoft, OneDrive, Office, Windows, Support. And then within the body of this, it says, please choose your email provider below and log in to view shared file. So here's the Microsoft 365 Office logo, or you could click Other. Now, I don't believe that this, it, this appears to me to just be copied from Microsoft. These links up here, these might be legitimate from Microsoft. As I look at the URL down in the bottom left corner, yes, this goes to products.office.com home. And this one also goes to, goes to Microsoft.com. So these are legitimate Microsoft links just to try to add legitimacy to this page. But this whole page here is designed within an Azure website as indicated by the URL address at the top. So at this point, the, the scammer's intention is that my client would click on Office, presuming they know that they have a Microsoft 365 email account, and that's associated with the word Office. It's, this, is, this is not a well-designed scam, in my opinion. Or you could click on Other to um, if you have your email hosted somewhere else. Now, as I float the mouse over these, there is no URL in the bottom left corner indicating where these, where this is gonna to go to when I click on them. So let's go ahead and uh, pause. Do I need to pause? Yeah, we'll do it as a pause. So I clicked on that office link and here's what it took me to. This looks like a standard Microsoft 365 sign in screen. There's a place for you to sign in. You can put in your email address and click next and that's going to take you to a password prompt. The catch is up here on the URL line. This does not say Microsoft.com or office.com. This says azurewebsites.net. So we are still within the confines of the scammer's website hosted on Microsoft Azure. This, this, is, this is scary, clever, and an elevation in scammer slash social engineering hoax that I've that I've seen and they'll just continue finding new and different ways of, of doing this stuff. So I think that's as far as we can go with this uh, dissecting this situation. I don't want to actually put in an email address there because this is where the bad guys are trying to capture an email address and a password. In order to gain the keys to the kingdom, truly. Now, if a person puts in their email address and password, most likely it's going to fail. It's going to fail to um, connect because at that point they've captured what they needed. They're done. They can give up the pursuit. Or it's possible if they put in valid credentials that it does take them deeper into a scam, I don't know, I'm not willing to go to that next step because I'm not using a virtual machine right here. Um, yeah, wow, this is just deep and intense. It's extremely important to train staff or, or yourself as an individual to look at any email with a critical eye even though it's somebody that you know, and even if they're doing some kind of normal transaction, it is normal for my client to receive an email regarding a past due invoice. Okay, maybe not normal that they get past due invoice emails, but an email dealing with an in invoice, it, that's entirely believable. It's very easy to conceive that these scammers 
get one out of a hundred who will take a bite on this. And once they take a bite out of that, and the scammers get into all their documents, all their emails, all of their contacts, and they start figuring out relationships, they can go deeper into um, scamming and, and accessing accounts directly, maybe even writing checks <laughs> to their own um, money laundering companies. Uh, it's critically important for training yourself and other people around you to be careful of emails and just pick up the phone and call somebody. <laughs> hey, did you really send this? All right, so this is not the normal kind of email that I expect to be doing on my channel. My channel is still young, and so I'm not actually getting enough activity for what I want to be doing. What I want to be doing is to provide free computer support to people over the, over the Internet using Zoom and using YouTube Live and using YouTube recorded videos so that I can spend time helping somebody through a computer issue, fixing a problem, or teaching a concept for no charge to that person. Now, it doesn't mean that, that, that there's no cost to it. The cost is, is that you have to be willing to come on screen with me and let me publish the, the video. Now, as you've seen, I'm very conscientious about blurring and blacking out uh, information to protect uh, private information. I can do that. So if you would like to request a session with me, the way to do it is send an email to that address that's on your screen right now, dougbetts at livewindowstraining.com. Give me an idea in the body of the email what you'd like help with. Now, at, at this point in the early stages of my channel, that's the way I'm taking requests. But if you find you're not getting a response to that, you, you could go to the website, livewindowstraining.com. And there you'll get a very brief, easy to read description of how I'm handling uh, service requests. So I'd love to help you if, uh, if that's of use to you. I hope this was useful information to you. Have a great day. Catch you later. Goodbye.